Hi guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the Magic Lantern Raw. Now all you Magic Lantern subscribers, I know that I'm months, at least two months behind on the, on the Raw, but I've been super busy, and I finally have had some time over the last two or three weeks to really sit down and do some research on the Magic Lantern Raw, and, uh, and figure out how to install it on the cameras and use it. So uh, I'm going to be doing a three-part series. Um, the first part, which will be today, of course, I'm just going to go over some of the things about Magic Lantern cameras that it works with, as um, far as different qualities that you can shoot at, and some other things that just kind of need to be talked about before you decide to put a uh, Magic Lantern Raw on your camera. In part two, we're going to go over how to install it and how to set it up on the 5D Mark II, T2i, and T3i, because those are the DSLR cameras I have, but it's pretty much universal throughout all the uh, make and models that allows uh, the raw footage to be installed on the Magic Lantern. And in part three, we're going to go over all the different, uh, well, we're going to go over one of my favorite ways to do the workflow. That's the problem with Magic Lantern Raw is the workflow. There's a couple different ways. So part four may be five, six, or seven. So there may be a two or three different uh, versions of the workflow for Mac and PC, um, whatever one hopefully works for you guys best. I'll show you the one I like, and I'll go through some of the other ones that are available as well. Um, and then I also want to put together a couple uh, minute, minute and a half videos using the T2i, T3i, and the 5D Mark II uh, separate videos of actually showing the RAW being shot. So let's kind of just dive into just the information on Magic Lantern RAW. So one of the really nice things about Magic Lantern RAW is it takes the camera going, most uh, the T2i, T2, T3, T2i and T3i both shoot at the 8-bit um, where Magic Lantern Raw allows you to get up to 14-bit, which really helps with color correction. So your highlights, if they're kind of blown out, it allows you to bring those highlights in and allows you to have more control over getting that, that color exactly where you need to, well balanced. Um, so if you're shooting and it's really bright outside and you've blown the sky out, but your subject maybe is, uh, is, is exposed right, um, that will allow you to help bring that sky back in so it is exposed as well with your subject so it looks nice, so it looks correct. Um, so that's one of the nice things about Magic Lantern Raw. Um, some other things are that it is still a little unstable. I have not had any serious problems with Raw, but since I've installed Raw on my cameras, uh, my cameras will, uh, I guess, stop working sometimes and I'll have to take the battery out and put it back in, but nothing serious to where it has locked a camera up or bricked a camera. So that is, that is always a plus, but again, the RAW is a little unstable. So if it is your only camera that you have and you're willing to take the chance to go for it, um, but it is not as stable as the actual 2.3 Magic Lantern firmware they've, they put out. So it's getting there. It's gotten a lot better in the last two months. That's another reason why I haven't put anything out is that uh, for me, the RAW footage just wasn't as stable as I'd liked it to be till just in the last couple weeks to where I'm really comfortable putting it on my camera and going out and shooting with it and testing it out. Um, other things uh, that it does, does not allow you to uh, record audio. So that's a little frustrating. But again, if you're recording audio, that's gonna take more megabytes per second as you were shooting and it would allow you to get less high quality raw footage. So uh, not using audio allows you to get a uh, higher, um, higher pixelation setup. Um, so with the 5D Mark II, um, you can comfortably get 720, but we're gonna go over all the frame rates and the cameras that the RAW does work on. So, um, kinda got a list down here of things that I wanted to go over. You will need a faster card to use Magic Lantern's RAW. Um, so if you're using a Class 6 or Class 8 card or a slow Class 10 card on your T2i, T3i, you're not gonna be able to use RAW. You're gonna need to get one of the newer, faster cards that, that uh, record more than 45 megabytes per second would really help. So let's go over, um, I have a list of all the cameras that it works on and the, and the uh, quality that it shoots um, comfortably at. So we'll start out with the uh, 5D Mark II. Um, you can comfortably get 1880 by 840 at 24 frames per second um, using a uh, 90 megabyte card. Now, one thing about the 5D Mark II that I've noticed is that when I've shot, I get a frame loss and I'm only able to shoot at 1344 by 756. Anything higher than that, um, I'm not able to record. Now, that could be my camera. It also could be sometimes the firmware itself is a little glitchy. You need to reinstall it. That can help the situation. Or it very well could be, even though I do have a 90 megabyte card, it's a Transcend, which is a nice brand, 
but it is uh, it is no Scandis. So it could be that I just don't have a, a good, uh, the, the SD card or a CF card that I'm using in my 5D Mark II just isn't giving me the right megabytes per second, so therefore I'm not able to get my full quality out of the camera. So those are some of the things that issues you could run into. So it works on the 60D. Uh, you can apparently get 1960 by 540 out of the 60D. Again, with like the 60D, T2i, T3i, the problem with them and the reason you can't get a higher quality video out of it as of right now, maybe Magic Lantern will find a way around this, is that those cameras can only write. So the, 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 uh, the speed that they can write to the card is only around 19 to 22 megabytes per second. So anything, if you get a higher quality raw video, it will just skip the frame and it will cause it to stop because the camera itself, even though you may have a fast enough card that can read, if you have a 90 megabyte card in your camera, it can maybe read 90 megabytes, but your camera cannot write that fast. So that is a, a snag or a hold up with the T2i and T3i. That is why, in my personal opinion, I do not think that shooting raw out of them is, uh, is really worth it, but I'll dive into that a little bit later on in this video. So it uh, will works on the T2i and T3i. Um, I'm able to get the 1960 by 540 out of both those cameras pretty comfortably. It does not look bad. Um, if you guys want to check out my Facebook, uh, if you can't wait till I get some of my footage put out, um, on my Facebook page I did shoot a raw video with the T3i, I believe, or maybe it was, yeah, it was a T3i, I believe, and the 50 millimeter lens. Um, you can go check out, it's like a minute long or 30 seconds long, and you can check out to see what the raw footage looked like uh, after I color graded it and uh, ran it through uh, an editor. Um, next is the 6D. Um, it apparently can do 1360 by 600 as um, far as quality is concerned. I don't, again, don't have that camera, so I haven't had any chance to really test that out. Now, cameras, uh, oh, it also works on the 5D Mark III, which really allows you to do the full uh, 1920 by 1080 um, quality as um, far as that is concerned, shooting raw, which is really nice. But the 5D Mark III has a faster read speed and uh, so it allows a faster, write, a faster card that writes faster to read. It will send the information to the card and the card can actually keep up with it. Uh, vice versa, the camera can actually uh, write fast enough so it allows you to get a higher quality raw video. Um, and uh, the cameras it will not work on are the, uh, the 7D T4i and T1i as of right now. There's a good chance it will never work on the 7D from what I've read. But again, you never know. They said that Magic Lantern would never be able to get ported to the 7D, and it has. Um, and then uh, anybody that has a 50D, the, surprisingly, someone's been able to get a 1280 by 960 uh, footage out of it. Now, I don't know how they did that. I read a little bit into it. But from what I can tell, uh, they were able to do that with a fast CF card. Um, I don't have a 50D, but if you guys want to get yourself a cheaper camera that can shoot pretty fast raw, uh, pretty high quality raw footage, look into the 50D on eBay or Amazon because I think they're only a couple hundred, maybe three, 300 bucks for a 50D. So it's kind of cool for a camera that could not originally shoot video um, that it is able to not only shoot video, but it can shoot raw video now. So that's pretty awesome. So going back to the T2i and T3i, um, I really don't think uh, RAW is worth it as of right now. One of the reasons is the workflow to get, uh, to get your footage is able to just be able to edit it and then export it is one, a really big pain in the, a pain in the butt. Um, that is with all of the RAW files as of right now. Um, but the T2i and T3i can only shoot again at 1960 by 540, which is a little frustrating um, as well as even at that, at that that quality sometimes it will still skip frames from time to time and uh, so it's just to me it's not worth the hassle and the time that you have to put into it to actually do it again it is fun so if you are interested in doing this you should go check it out and uh, and we're gonna be going I'll have files uh, downloadable and stuff all that set up for the second video and we go over how to install Magic Lantern and, uh, and how to set it up on your camera I've also set up a folder system that allows you to uh, put your T3i raw files and your T2i raw files all in one folder. So if you have a T2i and a T3i, like myself, um, I can put all of, all of my Magic Lantern files on each SD card 
Before, from what I could tell, you had to split it up. So if you were shooting raw on the T3i and then you took that SD card out of the T3i and put it in the T2i, it would not read it and vice versa. So I've set up a folder system that will allow your SD card to be read by the T2i and T3i at the same time so you can jump between the two cameras with one SD card. Um, I don't know if anybody else has figured that out yet. I'm sure they have. It took me a couple days to figure out how to set that up, but I was able to do that. So there will be a downloadable link here in the next video allowing you guys to be able to do that with your T2i and T3i. So hopefully this guy's answered some of your Magic Lantern Raw questions. I'm sure there's a lot more you guys may have out there. Please leave a comment or send me a message. I'd be more than happy to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'd be more than happy to do the research and figure out the answer. Um, like I said, I spent a couple weeks trying to get a lot of this information down so that I could let you guys know about it because there's still a lot of uncertainty with the uh, Magic Lantern Raw and it's still in the baby stages of a uh, of development so we still have you know another six months I would guess before we really see a stable raw and maybe hopefully within the next year we'll have a really solid faster workflow that does a good job check us out on Facebook at David D images where you guys can keep up with all kinds of information and things that we're doing and pictures we upload as well as you can check us out on Twitter at media unlock and of course the new website we launched about three or four months ago mediaunlock.net with all kinds of interesting information on there you guys have a great day and I'll catch you next time